All right, I think we are good to go ahead and get started. So hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for another one of our RPI's Webinar Wednesdays. My name is Daniel Janab. Presenting with me is Quinn Huntsman, and together we're going to be going over the recent release of Perceptive Content EP2, what you need to know, and why you might consider upgrading soon. But before we get started, let's tell you a bit about who we are. Uh, so again, my name is Daniel Janab. Uh, I am a project coordinator here at RPI Consultants. I received my master's degree in communications management uh, from the George Washington University. I have extensive experience managing successful projects uh, that involve the full content and process automation software suite. Uh, so that's perceptive content upgrades and enhancements, Brainware by Highland, eForms, iScript development, the full COFAX lineup, which includes total agility, transformation, capture, RPA, and in for loss and products of loss and B10 and the newer Cloud Suite financials. However, of all of those, I've easily gone through the most ImageNow and perceptive content upgrades during my time here at RPI. Uh, and for a, a fun fact about me, um, I am the de facto office personal trainer and nutritionist. And please remember, a personal health check is just as important as a technical health check. All right, I am Quinn Huntsman. I'm a business analyst here with RPI Consultants. Uh, my background is mostly in perceptive content administration and troubleshooting. Um, I do a lot of upgrades, some integration, some iScript work here and there. Um, so that's most of what I do on the perceptive content side. Um, I am also a certified uh, technical solution specialist for COFAX's RPA product or robotic process automation. Um, so a lot of fun stuff there that we have some content out on as well. Um, if Daniel gets to be the office uh, fitness guy, I will self-certify myself as the office stir fry master. Um, I've had a lot of practice with my with the new normal at home uh, practicing my cooking. So I, I'll claim that one. Um, so what's on the agenda for today? Um, first, we're gonna talk about Highland's perceptive content release strategy um, with the release of EP1 and going forward, um, what it means for specific versions and the path of upgrading. Um, after that, we'll talk about what, as far as content, as far as features is new in perceptive content EP2. Um, we will also, at that time, quickly revisit what's new in Perceptive Content 7.3 and EP1 to kind of provide a catch up for folks who may be coming from 7.15 or before. Um, as part of that, we'll also be talking about what's new in Perceptive Experience content apps. Uh, we'll do the same thing with that. We'll recap what's been new since 7.3, uh, EP1, and then what is specific to EP2. Um, to wrap things up, uh, Daniel's gonna talk a little bit about planning your upgrade here with us at RPI. Um, why you should upgrade depending on the situation you're in, um, coming from different versions of perceptive content. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about things you can do per, to prepare for your upgrade. Uh, and the last thing we will do is turn it over to you all um, for uh, questions if you have any. Again, we wanted to, before we start, we wanna thank you for joining us today. Um, so I think with that, we're ready to get started here, Daniel. All right, so the first main topic in today's webinar uh, is going to be the new perceptive content release strategy. So what's different with these newer EP releases compared to previous versions? So the first significant change, uh, previously releases would come out in numerical sequence. So it was ImageNow version six, moving through perceptive content version seven. Uh, however, with the EP releases, we are starting over at EP1, and as of last Friday, we were actually at EP2. Um, however, as a side note, uh, these versions still may be unofficially referred to as 7.4 or 7.5. Um, so if somebody is referring to a version as 7.5, they will be referring to EP2. And for a little more clarification on this versioning strategy, uh, EPs or enhancement packs uh, are releases that are supposed to be more minor in nature. Uh, so what that means is that they will consist of limited bug fix support, um, but they will be releasing uh, more frequently with specific EPs being considered long-term or major releases. Uh, those are gonna be your classic big versions. 
Um, the long-term release EPs will have larger bug fix support and the previous enhancement packs rolled in. And EP2, uh, which again, just released last Friday, is considered the first true long-term release of the EP line. Uh, so just in an attempt to better explain the versioning and support strategy, uh, this visual shows EPs one through five, um, with specific attention being drawn to EPs two and four. Uh, as those are going to be considered the long-term release versions. Uh, so when upgrading, it is now recommended to move to a long-term release version as opposed to um, an odd-numbered EP, uh, as those will contain the most significant enhancements. Additionally, upgrades are now cumulative, uh, so an upgrade from 7.3 to EP2 uh, will also contain the patches and fixes from EP1. Um, and in the future, you know, if you wait a little bit longer, um, even moving from 7.3 to EP4, uh, will contain all of the patches and fixes from EPs 1 through 3. Um, something important about this to note is that with the change in versioning strategy, uh, there is also a change in the support policy. Um, at least that's what we heard when Highland released EP1. So previously, uh, each release of Perceptive Content had three years of full support and one year of limited support. Um, but now, again, with the information that was available to us with the EP1 release, um, these long-term versions will have two years of full support and a year of limited support. And here are the uh, end-of-life dates um, for Perceptive Content versions, just to uh, quickly run these by everybody. Um, so Perceptive Content 715, uh, you are in limited support currently, and end of service is rapidly approaching as of next month. Uh, Perceptive Content 722, uh, again, just hit limited service um, starting May of this year, and end of service will be May 2021. Uh, Perceptive Content 723, limited support starting August of next year, and end of service, service August 2022. And finally, Perceptive Content 7.3, uh, limited support July 2022, and end of service July 2023. And something critical about Perceptive Content 7.3 is that WebNow is actually no longer supported after 7.3. Um, so if your organization does actively use WebNow and not experience apps, um, you are not recommended to move to EP1 or EP2 because WebNow will not be supported in those versions. All right, so now we can talk a little bit more about the specifics and what has changed as far as features uh, for perceptive content core services um, in EP2. Again, we'll also kind of backtrack and talk about uh, what changed with 7.3 and EP1. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that here. So first, um, we'll go over the major changes with 7.3 and EP1. Um, one thing that's been introduced with 7.3 um, is sort of an attempt to open up perceptive content more for native ODBC driver support. So um, it now supports native drivers for Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. Um, this does introduce a additional step, not a hard step, but just an additional step that you must do for your upgrade or implementation, uh, which is set up your own system DSN if you're in Windows, uh, just or your ODBC connection to the ImageNow database um, yourself. It is no longer bundled with that data direct driver that sort of does that work for you. Um, moving on here, we have some up-to-date um, database version and operating system support in the latest releases of Perceptive Content. Um, you can go up to Oracle 19C on the database server side if you're an Oracle shop. Um, you can also do 12C and pretty much everything in between there. Um, for Microsoft SQL Server, um, you can go to versions 2016, 17, I believe is the release after that. And then as it says here, you can go all the way up to 2019 um, in 7.3 and so on. Um, for operating systems, um, you can do Windows Server 2019. Um, and if you're a Linux shop, again, you can go up to Oracle Linux 7 or the Red Hat Linux 7. Um, the main core service or the main core perceptive content thing 
that has changed with the release of 7.3 and forward is the removal of WebNow functionality, as Daniel pointed out. So again, just to reiterate, version 7.3 of Perceptive Content is the last, uh, the latest release, the last release of Perceptive Content that will support WebNow functionality. Um, so if you are a WebNow shop, uh, you will have to stop your upgrade at 7.3, or rather what we would recommend is find a way to get off of WebNow, get over to Content Apps, um, start that process so that you can be available for all uh, version upgrades uh, beyond that. So um, again, if you're an EP1, uh, you'll notice there's no references to WebNow or anything like that. It is totally removed from the system after 7.3. Um, to talk a little bit about what's specifically new with the Perceptive Content uh, Server and Core Services as of EP2, um, there are some big bug fixes, some resolved issues we want to point out here. Um, there was an issue with installers not preserving settings uh, during an upgrade or implementation. Um, for example, if your iNow iNi file has some specific LDAP configuration and you're performing an upgrade um, and those settings aren't preserved, um, that has been since patched, fixed uh, for EP2. Um, one I'm a big fan of here um, is improved database transaction error handling. So um, you'll have a little bit more details going forward when you are trying to troubleshoot some issues with your database connection from perceptive content. So exciting stuff there. Um, with Business Insight, um, the Business Insight has gained support for IBM Cognos Business Intelligence 11.13. Uh, which was previously only supporting up to 10.2.2 uh, .2 .2, uh, for IBM Cognos Business Intelligence. So um, a little bit of forward action there. And then um, another thing that's changed with the Perceptive Content Server is the LDAP configuration um, within the INI files um, now specify the secure LDAP port by default. So um, if you are Doing an upgrade, this is one thing. If you are a shop that uses LDAP with your image now implementation, um, one thing to consider during your upgrade is we may need to double check that we have our LDAP settings backed up, uh, ready to change what we need to change if we upgrade and these settings are switched to an SSL port rather than the uh, previously used LDAP port in our configuration. So um, another exciting thing that's changed with the Perceptive Content Client um, is you can now have multiple workflow viewer windows open. Um, there's actually a setting available that will be available in the iNow iNi, um, something like uh, allow multiple windows equals true or something to that effect uh, that you can toggle to either allow this uh, functionality to exist or not. Uh, but definitely exciting. You know, you're no longer bound to having that one workflow viewer window open at a time from the client side. So. Uh, next, we want to talk about what is new with Perceptive Experience content apps. Um, again, we'll recap what's been changed since 7.3 or the 3.0 release of content apps and then EP1 and EP2. So uh, with 3.0, which was the release that came alongside with Perceptive Content 7.3, um, there have been some changes to three major modules or apps within content apps, uh, tasks, folders, and workflow. Um, for tasks within the content apps client, you now have the ability to create and modify those tasks within Perceptive Experience. Um, for folders, you're getting uh, gaining more of that experience that you're used to within the thick client. You can view related folder properties and related folders. Um, you can view related tasks. Uh, there's now support for view filters and prompted filters when you're searching through those folders. Um, and then for workflow, you can perform some, some of those additional workflow actions you're used to, such as adding, opening, or routing folders in workflow. So again, uh, with 3.0, uh, with changes to those three major modules, we're gaining some of that functionality that you're used to from the thick client or even from uh, WebNow. Uh, so again, that, that, that gap is quickly becoming bridged. Uh, so again, this is why we stress to get off of WebNow as soon as possible and uh, get over on the content apps train. So. With that, we can move on to what's new with Content Apps EP1. So um, you gain the ability with EP1 to create and save ad hoc prompted searches in Content Apps. Um, you get a little bit more customization available to you in the config JSON file, which is just a file at the root of the experience install um, that allows you to hide panes uh, or different 
windows in the document viewer within Perceptive Constant Experience, so some customization gain there. Um, you can export grid data to a CSV file. You can delete content within Experience Content Apps, which is exciting. Again, that's a, another major functionality that gets us closer to a full replacement for WebNow or a full experience of the thick client from a web, from a web experience. Um, and then, very last, you get uh, support for the Highland IDP or the Highland Identity Provider for SSO uh, in Content Apps EP1. In Content Apps EP2, um, there is one big change or one new kind of step that's introduced called the User Preferences Service. So um, this is a microservice that stores user preferences for applications. Um, this is going to add a step to your content apps experience install. Um, not, not a very lengthy step, but again, just a, you know, some of this work offloaded to the service now. So it is an additional setup you have to do as part of content apps. Um, a couple things to note for this uh, user preferences service is that it does require its own database. Um, there is documentation available on creating this database and there's a couple key things with that that are noted here such as that there is a script available from Highland that um, creates the user preferences service user schema or user login and database schema for you. Um, that's the name of the script there, preferences service SQL. Uh, so that's available from Highland. Uh, you don't have to do any of that kind of thing on your own. Um, and then the last thing to note here about this database is that um, it does require a case sensitive collation, such as the Latin one general 100 that a lot of folks are probably used to seeing if you're on the SQL Server side. Um, another new uh, big addition to the Content Apps release with EP2 is on the annotations page, um, there is a new section for recently used annotations. Um, what this is, is it allows you to quickly select one of the last four annotations you've used in Content Apps. So um, a little bit of improvement to the user experience, to the navigation there. Um, more you know, ease of access for that kind of thing. So good signs going forward um, with these updates to experience. All right, thank you, Quinn. Um, so if you are thinking about upgrading to Perceptive Content EP2, uh, here's a little bit about what you need to know and how you can start planning. Uh, so to start us off, um, here's a little list of why we think you should upgrade. Um, or if the jump to EP2 makes sense from your current solution. Uh, so first, if you are on a perceptive content version uh, of 7.2.3 or older, uh, if you are an active user of perceptive experience apps and any of the features that Quinn just talked about in the EP1 uh, or EP2 list uh, sounded like they would be beneficial to your business, uh, if you are currently using WebNow but you want to remove the Java dependency, um, we would highly recommend moving to EP2 and getting on experience apps. Uh, if you're planning to continue with perceptive content and um, you are approaching your limited support or end of support dates. Um, of course, moving to the most recent version, make sure that you're gonna have most, most time uh, with support. And finally, uh, to take advantage of the EP release strategy. Uh, these are going to be coming out more frequently and they will be uh, having a number of bug fixes that we think will be beneficial to you and your business. So to talk about a couple things you can do, um, if you're considering an upgrade, you're planning an upgrade, um, some things you can do to prepare for that upgrade from the perceptive content side. So um, one thing, that you can do is remove redundant, unused, um, maybe some workflows that you were started to design for, for fun or for a test scenario or whatever that didn't come to fruition. Um, the same thing applies to application plans. Um, really the idea here is that all of this stuff, um, all of these workflows, all these application plans, this is all stored as metadata in the ImageNow database. So not only do you uh, free up a little bit of space and potentially performance depending on the number of unused application plans or workflows you have uh, by getting rid of that stuff, but you also create a cleaner uh, user admin experience um, for whoever's in your, your admin seat on the ImageNow side, uh, not having to comb through a bunch of unused uh, workflows or application plans. Um, the next thing that you should be doing, uh, hopefully already, is performing regularly scheduled database backups. Uh, this should be full backups of your database. 
um, on a regular basis, whether that's nightly, weekly, um, but it should be getting done. That way, if you need to roll back, uh, if you, for whatever reason, something happened and you need to revert back to your old schema version, um, you can, or point in time, you can do that with your database backups. Um, another thing you can do to sort of lighten the load on the system uh, before doing a migration or an upgrade is you can use Retention Policy Manager to remove unnecessary OSM objects. Um, really what that means is you can set these policies to delete documents with custom property uh, date that's older than this. So you can, you know, clean up a lot of documents that way and kind of lighten up your perceptive content instance before you migrate it to a new environment. So that's always a good idea. Um, another thing you can do is clean up and kind of review your log directory. Um, perceptive content zips up uh, logs from its uh, in-server log directory every night. Um, so there's probably a lot more in there than you might think. Um, it's a good idea to kind of go look at those, those are all dated, so you can decide, hey, I don't really need anything that's older than this date, and kind of ship all that stuff off, delete it, um, and decide where you, what you do need to keep as far as logs. Um, and then you'll have a smaller subset of logs uh, to bring over as part of your migration. The last thing, and what we usually do as part of our uh, upgrade projects, um, is review and maintain your I scripts. So similar to removing redundant or unused workflows and application plans, the first thing you want to do with your iScript directory is uh, recognize iScripts that aren't used, maybe that were placed in there, started being developed and didn't, you know, come to come to fruition, or uh, copies of iScripts that are just backups. Uh, moving that stuff to a kind of a cleaner directory structure um, always helps. Getting rid of unused iScripts helps a lot. Um, part of what we do in our upgrades is we kind of We'll go through your iScripts looking for deprecated uh, STL functions. So that's something you can also start on your own um, by referencing the STL documentation provided by Highland. Um, just doing a find throughout your iScripts, um, seeing which scripts use these potentially deprecated functions, taking note of that, um, and having an idea of how you could improve the, the overall health of your iScripts uh, as part of your upgrade. So let's say that your organization has gone through this upgrade preparation uh, checklist and you are ready to make the jump and upgrade. Uh, I may be a bit biased, but I'm of the opinion that you should upgrade with RPI consultants. Um, we have industry-renowned perceptive content uh, upgrade and integration experts um, with successfully integrating perceptive with uh, numerous softwares, but um, in particular, Brainware by Highland, uh, RPI's Yoka platform, OPEX products, and in for Lawson. And as kind of a side note here, um, the newest version of Brainware for invoices uh, did release in April of this year. So if you are leveraging Brainware as your OCR software and you are looking to upgrade your perceptive content version, um, it, it may be a good idea to upgrade Brainware as well. Uh, we do have broad industry experience um, having performed numerous perceptive content upgrades in the industries of higher education, healthcare, manufacturing, construction, government, utilities, and public services. Uh, we have a team of experienced technical and solution architects who are uh, ready to optimize your current and future business processes, as well as a dedicated PMO uh, helping to manage successful projects from before kickoff to the final close call. And finally, something I would like to bring up is that uh, we at RPI do offer a managed services support option. Uh, this service allows for not just perceptive content upgrade support and enhancements, but whatever professional services your organization requires. Uh, whether that's custom scripting or e-form development, uh, perceptive content administration, or just routine integration point or workflow health checks or diagrams. Uh, with our managed services package, we'll ensure that you and your business are able to position yourself to take full advantage of each EP release and are able to keep your software running at peak efficiency through regular monitoring. And this is the point where I think we can turn it over to you, uh, the audience. So with what Quinn and I have discussed today, um, EP2, are there any questions that we can answer for you? 
Hey guys, yeah. uh, oh, Daniel, got first it. question for you is, um, is the user preference service compatible with Oracle? With Oracle, um, I did take a look through the documentation made available for this new service. And yes, I think you can provide it. You can create a database dedicated for it on SQL Server or Oracle. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then a question about, uh, quote unquote, removing or replacing web now with content apps. You could just expand on that a little more and talk about any licenses that are needed. Yeah, so um, for for WebNow and for content apps, there's not technically a content apps license. There is, um, last I checked, you need a pack of combo client licenses, um, which basically says between the thick client and whichever web uh, app you're using, you can have this many um, this many instances of access through those. So you do need uh, combo licenses. Um, you also need licenses for the prerequisite software for content apps, uh, which is integration server um, and obviously perceptive content, the server and everything else. Um, so that is the licensing aspect of it. Um, I would encourage you to talk to your Highland representative uh, for um, any more combo client specific questions, but as far as the transition from WebNow to content apps, um, uh, Daniel, you wanna add a little bit more to that? Yeah, so the functionality is not exactly one-to-one. -one. Um, it is getting very, very close. Um, there potentially could be some things um, that your business specifically does in WebNow that are one-offs. Um, that experience may not be able to do. Uh, however, we would need to do discovery first um, to see if that would be the case. Uh, and with the recent releases, so 3.0, EP1, and EP2, all brought uh, really cool features that are um, closing the gap in any sort of functionality uh, between the two versions. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, WebNow is a Java app, Experience is an HTML5 based app, so there's gonna be some differences, but we're getting there, so. It, it can happen. Um, and then we've got a question that goes back to uh, end of life support um, and just general support uh, for other versions. We've got a customer that is using ImageNow version 723. Do they need to upgrade to EP2, uh, EP2 now or, or just whatever the latest version is? Are they okay for a while? Yeah, let me actually go back um, to that slide and show you the um, uh, support dates again. So 723, um, limited support starting August 2021. Uh, if you're okay with that, you could potentially wait even longer. Um, if you don't want to get into limited support, um, probably this coming year you're going to want to look into upgrading, um, preferably to, to EP2. Hey, uh, we have another question about um, using combo licenses and regular concurrent licenses, though. So don't know exactly what the, the question might be asking um, if that customer or that listener might um, resubmit kind of specifically what you were wanting to know about using combo or concurrent licenses. I think the, the question is generally, can they coexist? And, and the answer is yes. So. You can have a mixture of ImageNow client licenses, WebNow licenses, and combo licenses. Um, however, the the WebNow licenses, if you have any, which isn't super common, but some people still do, um, they uh, they would be useless uh, post 7.3. Uh, I am working with Highland customer service to figure out what happens to those licenses uh, for clients who have them. Thanks. Here's then, a good question. Another... I see. What's, what's the right. foundation name relation? Um, that's a that's a question I have as well. Uh, it seems to be with the EP releases, um, just sort of a new a new branding for perceptive content. Uh, at least that's my take on it. I don't know, uh, John or Daniel, if you have any other information on the foundation naming convention there that you're aware of. Yeah. So my 
my hypothesis here is is that it's it's the fa- so the EPs are building on the base foundation. Um, so you know some of the larger upgrades, um, you know maybe six six to seven two or or six six to six seven, uh, were pretty significant. And I think with the foundations and the EPs, they're trying to minimize the impact um, of each upgrade by kind of building upon each one. Yeah, I would say both both observations are correct. It's mostly a marketing and branding um, name, and it, it brings it in alignment with OnBase, which also now shares the same versioning uh, scheme and is also called OnBase Foundations. So to this point, there are no non-foundation versions. Uh, in the future, it's possible that we would see um, a, a premium version of, of one product or another. It's a good question. Uh, another question came in about perceptive experience. Uh, can you use views in experience apps, or do you have to rebuild the search each time you access the app? Um, you can use views, but um, you you get the views that exist from the perceptive content management console. So um, if you if you build a, a view in in management console, uh, that view will be available, obviously based on the permissions you give it um, through content apps. Um, so yes, you can, you can uh, use your views in content apps. Great, and then uh, maybe just reiterate, is the user preference service optional? Um, it, so it, it is listed as a, as a specific step in the installation for uh, EP2 content apps. So at this point, I would, I would not treat it as optional. I would um, go through the setup uh, for user preferences uh, service. Yeah, I would say um, more than likely content apps will work just fine for the most part without it. Uh, no guarantee, it could throw some errors. Um, but what it definitely won't do is save the user preferences because that's what it's for. Yeah. All right, looks like that may be the end of our questions. All right, awesome. Well, uh, everyone, thank you for attending another of RPI's webinar Wednesdays. Uh, to find future webinars and to access all of our previously recorded webinars, uh, please visit rpic.com slash webinars. And for a little sneak peek, uh, look ahead. Um, we do have some exciting things coming up. Uh, later today, uh, senior consultants Kaylin Myers and Alan Sheppers uh, will be presenting on how to make OnBase work with Infor Lawson. Uh, later this month, uh, join John Marney, who has uh, been assisting answering questions here, uh, the Content and Process Automations Manager of Solution Delivery, um, for an office hours discussion and demonstration of Microsoft Power Automate. Uh, and then uh, here in early August, uh, John again will be coming back and reviewing the upgrade process to COPAC's process director for SAP. Uh, for some additional resources, uh, rpic.com slash knowledge base for the uh, knowledge base of um, our perceptive content and other softwares. Uh, again, rpic.com slash webinars for access to our webinars. And uh, if you're curious about the professional services we offer uh, for perceptive content, uh, rpic.com slash image now and image now upgrades. And finally, just a little bit about the company as a whole. Uh, we do have over 100 full-time consultants, um, including project managers and technical and solution architects. Uh, we are based out of Baltimore, Maryland, but we do have additional offices in Tampa, Florida, uh, Kansas City, Missouri, where Quinn and I are actually located, and our newest office just opened up in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we offer a number of technical and professional services um, consisting of technical strategy and architecture, uh, new installations, upgrades, and migrations, process analysis, system design, and implementations, managed services, uh, which I did talk about briefly here today, and staff augmentation, and then project and change management. And we are a Highland authorized solution provider. Um, we are a service provider and licensed reseller of perceptive content, uh, enterprise search, brainware, and on base. And uh, just again, we have experience leveraging and implementing these solutions. 
um, in the accounts payable and financial process automation industries, uh, human resources and HCM, um, higher education, so student transcripts and applications, and then healthcare, manufacturing, public services, and government. Uh, so again, thank you everyone so much for attending the webinar today. I hope everyone has a happy and healthy 4th of July weekend. Thank you. Thank you.